Welcome back. We talked previously about counting carbohydrates and the importance of having accurate carb counts to calculate the correct doses of insulin for somebody with type 1 diabetes. Today we're going to talk about other variables that, that affect blood sugar, not only the amount of carbohydrate, but the type. So our objectives with this module are to name two carbohydrate choices that when used can cause rapid blood glucose rise or a spike. We're going to name two dietary variables that slow down digestion and explain why a person taking rapid acting insulin may be hypoglycemic 30 minutes after eating a high fat meal. And explain why a person drinking a large juice or liquid carbohydrate source that's sweet um, and injecting the rapid acting insulin could have a period of both hyperglycemia and then hypoglycemia. So not only is it the amount of carbohydrate, it's the type that affects the blood glucose level. And people on continuous glucose monitors can see this when they download their data because a continuous glucose monitor will check blood glucose levels about every six minutes and then download it on a computer will show graphs and they'll learn which foods digest faster and slower. Not everybody has access to those. So the variables that we'll look at, fast digesting carbohydrates, will give you a steeper rise in blood sugar. And you can see that in red here. The highest blood glucose after that meal is at about 50 minutes. Look at the green. It's flatter initially. The blood glucose rise doesn't go as much up. It goes further out and lasts longer. That would be something that would be a meal that digests slower for different variables we'll explore. So normally, a blood sugar will be highest one to two hours after a mixed meal, meaning a balance of carbohydrate, protein, and fat. If you ate only fruit, it would be quicker. If you ate something extremely high fat, it would be slower. But your average day in and day out balanced meal, you can expect the blood sugar to peak one to two hours after the meal. Variables that would change that would be liquid. Liquid moves through the stomach very quickly. It's like turning on water in the sink and watching it disappear. There's nothing holding it back in the stomach. An empty stomach, that's going to be down into the intestine and into the blood in 10 to 15 minutes. Something really refined like white rice, white bread, also very quick to digest and can give blood sugar a more rapid rise. Higher fiber foods will digest slower because the fiber itself doesn't digest and it interferes with the enzymes getting at the starch, so it takes longer to digest the grain. High fat foods digest the slowest, and in fact, they'll hold up anything else in the stomach that's there with it. It's the pyloric sphincter that tightens when a high fat meal hits the stomach. So if you're having cheese and crackers, for example, the cheese is high fat. It's not like the crackers get through. It's all in there together. The pyloric sphincter tightens. The food's mixing and churning for longer and getting more acids added to it. So the crackers are going to digest later. So beyond counting carbohydrates, it is important to count the carbohydrates accurately, as we said with you know, the tools available, labels and lists and measuring cups and scales, apps and websites. But equally important is knowing the onset peak and duration times of the insulin being used for that patient and matching that to the carb digestion and absorption times. So timing matters with high fat meals. In blue is the curve, the timing of insulin, the rapid acting insulins that are used mostly these days. Rapid acting insulins have their strongest peak around 30 to 90 minutes. They start working very quickly, within 15 minutes or so. And by about four hours, they're fairly finished. A high fat meal, remember, will be digesting slowly because the pyloric sphincter is going to tighten, the meal is going to be retained in the stomach longer. And the issue here, you can see as you overlap those timing curves, is that when the insulin, the rapid acting insulins, peak in 30 to 90 minutes, the food might not even be in the bloodstream yet. The risk there is hypoglycemia because the insulin is drawing the sugar out of the blood into the cells, but the food is still in the stomach. Eventually the food digests, the insulin's wearing off, the glucose hits the bloodstream, and you've missed the peak of the insulin. At that point, the person's hyperglycemic. And in fact, there isn't enough insulin left 
to bring the blood sugar back down. And for somebody who's not checking regularly, they won't notice that they're high. They'll just have high blood glucose longer. So it's important to test frequently enough to catch these things and get a correction dose as well. Now somebody on a pump has the opportunity to use that technology to their advantage. A pump, like a syringe, can give all the insulin at once. So if the person is taking six units, they can push a button, all six units can go in at one time. Or the user can say, no, I'm having a cheeseburger and fries. It's going to take a long time to digest. I want the six units to come out slowly. That's called a dual wave or a delayed bolus or a combo bolus. And what that does is it takes the six units and it divides it into very small little bursts, maybe every six minutes a part of the dose over a certain amount of time. So if the person wants that insulin to come out over two hours, they program it to do that, or over one hour, you can decide that based on different meal compositions, sort of a trial and error basis. Timing matters with liquid carbohydrates. Pay attention again to the insulin action time on the slide. This is the rapid acting insulin given pre-meal and it peaks within 30 to 90 minutes. It does start working quickly, but the the main uh, power is over the 30 to 90 minute period, and the insulin wears off in about four hours or so. Juice, straight through the stomach. Soda, straight through the stomach. Anything that's a liquid carbohydrate is gonna get into the system, into the blood very quickly. In fact, can beat the insulin. Digestion of liquid carbs is complete in about 15 minutes. That's before the insulin is peaking. And you have an initial risk here of high blood sugar, hyperglycemia, even though you counted the carbohydrates and gave the right dose. The rapid acting insulins last about four hours. It doesn't wear off quickly just because you had only liquid carbs. It's gonna have its duration action. And at that point, you're looking at a risk of hypoglycemia because the carbohydrate doesn't stay with you four hours. And so it's, especially if you're gonna throw in exercise, if three hours after taking that dose and having that juice, you decide to play basketball, that increases the risk that you're gonna get low as well. It's just not a good match. Eventually they might have insulins that work that quickly and get out of your system that quickly, but that isn't happening yet. Um, keep in mind, when you make your own insulin, endogenous insulin is secreted directly into the bloodstream and has a half-life of about one minute. And so the body will make just as much as it needs and it will stop when it doesn't need it anymore. That's not what happens when you inject insulin subcutaneously. It has a duration of action. So in summary, food choices affect digestion and absorption timing of the carbohydrate, which in turn affects blood glucose response. That's gonna be your variables of solid versus liquids, whether the food is refined or has fiber, whether the meal is very low in fat or very high in fat. And you have to understand the insulin kinetics of onset, peak, and duration so that you can try to get the meal and the insulin times to overlap.